Meanwhile, as tensions in the area grow overnight, a Palestinian attacker killing two and wounding two more in a stabbing spree in Tel Aviv, right in the middle of the day. As, uh, as up in the north, Americans are urged to leave Lebanon immediately. REA Lightstone served as a senior advisor to the former U.S. ambassador to Israel. He joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I want to I go first to this phone call that's being reported by Axios, where apparently Biden is urging Netanyahu or even scolding Netanyahu as, as though that it's all on Israel to end this war. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, as I commented on X uh, just when that call was reported, when Axios reports something from a phone call in between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu, it's what the Biden administration wants to leak. Mm -hmm. That's happened for the last three and a half years. That's their method of choice. I, I, I commented at that point in time was, I wish, I really wish that the president of the United States of America spoke to our enemies as clearly and as directly as he does to our allies. He's focused once again completely and totally on the wrong place. Instead of being forceful against Iran, he pressures our democratic ally, Israel. Yeah, part of this report, and like I said, it's being reported, is that Biden told Benjamin Netanyahu that the U.S. would not come to their aid if Israel escalated the situation. How do you parse what escalating the situation is as opposed to responding? I mean, we saw uh, what happened to the Druze in the north, uh, the, the atrocity that happened there. You have to respond to that. So how do you, how does the Biden administration dictate what is or isn't escalation based on what may come back from Lebanon or even uh, other places? Your point is exactly correct. What does that mean, escalation? Hezbollah started fighting this war on October 8th. Hamas began the war on October 7th. There was a ceasefire on October 6th. So all of this has been at the fault of the Iranian proxies. The number one funder of the Iranian proxies has been the Biden administration. And they have a separate issue, which is they can't win an election because there is a Hamas wing of the Democratic Party. And until mm. this war ends and they can pretend that this didn't exist, they won't be able to rally all of their voters in order to be able to win. So Biden and Harris are trying to dictate the terms of Israel's existential fight for its ex existence. If you can imagine, last Saturday night, uh, we found out that there were 12 kids murdered playing soccer in Israel. And then over the course of the week, Israel successfully eliminated three arch terrorists, one of them responsible for the deaths of over 240 Americans in 1983, and the U.S. decides to tell Israel to take it down a notch. It, we're backwards here. You know, President Trump reported uh, yesterday, I think a few days ago, he, he was giving a speech, and he said that um, Kamala Harris doesn't have support from what he called the Palestinian wing of her party. He said they probably support him because he's going to bring peace to the Middle East. Now, I understand what he's saying there, but do the people of Gaza or, or do the people even in this country protesting, is it peace that they want or is it getting rid of Israel that they want? No, I think President Trump there was speaking about people who care about the Palestinian people absolutely should support President Trump because the greatest thing for the Palestinian people would be the elimination of Hamas and the rest of the terror organizations. Mm. If you look at President Trump's track record, five peace treaties during his term in between Israel and Arab and Muslim majority countries, if you look at those countries, they all, with the exception of Sudan, have progressed meaningfully in these past four years. If you look in the last three and a half years under the uh, Biden-Harris administration, only two peace treaties have been conducted, one in between Iran and Saudi Arabia, brokered by China, the other in between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, also brokered by China. I can only imagine Israel wants peace. I think that's the pursuit of the government there, and I hope that we find it soon. REA. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.